Zelensky might just all things like this. Then the family from Kenya will talk about that. And so on. Well, that's what I want. That's Difficult situation on the east because they have a lot of people, a lot of people really. I mean Russians, and they don't think for them it's it's not people. I mean that so they push them, and uh, a lot of Russians are killed each day. So last my connection with the general was today morning, and uh, yesterday, for example, Russian they lost only on on this on the east direction they lost uh, 800 people been killed so they don't think about it we have to think that's why it's not simple that's why we think first of all about people and then about the land Russia is hosting North Korean combat troops, believed to number between 1,500 and 12,000, from the Korean People's Army on its territory. The move may appear to deepen Pyongyang's alliance commitment to Moscow, but it carries serious risks for Russia and highlights the challenges Moscow faces in using these troops. Expert Mark Galliotti writes about this for the Sunday Times. Despite the discipline and physical fitness of North Korean soldiers, their actual combat experience is very limited, adding to the difficulty of their potential involvement in combat. Although they are sometimes referred to as special forces, they are simply more specialized than most of the 950,000 regular soldiers in the Korean People's Army and are considered physically fit, disciplined and well-trained. However, they have no real combat experience. Deploying them directly into combat would also be problematic. Most North Koreans do not speak Russian, and the risk of miscommunication and friendly fire would be significant. Pyongyang would also be concerned about the risk of defecting to Ukraine. In any case, the importance of even 12,000 new troops should be put in context. The Russians lose that many people every 10 days of fighting. It will not change the basic arithmetic of the conflict. The expert writes, with its own reserves dwindling, Russia has long cooperated with North Korea to supply ammunition and the military specialists, but much of this equipment has been criticized for its poor quality. Six North Korean technicians were killed in Ukraine, shelling in Donetsk this month, underscoring the risk of significant casualties. Russia also pays for these supplies with food, raw materials and, more importantly, its military technology. Russian analysts fear that Moscow is selling off the family silver to secure a short-term boost at the front. While North Korea may continue to supply ammunition, the technology transfer is a one-time deal. Ukrainian military analyst Vladislav Zelezniov believes Russia is particularly keen on bringing in engineering and technical units from North Korea for combat support. The DPRK's engineering and technical units are among the best globally. North Korea's territory is heavily fortified with defense structures, which means their engineering teams have years of hands-on experience building reliable fortifications. This expertise would be highly useful for the Russians, as they always start constructing new defenses whenever they secure new positions. Zelezniov explained, the expert emphasized that North Korea's military capabilities shouldn't be underestimated. <laughs> 